Hey guys, today's video is a Dollar Tree DIY video and I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how I took two packs of those felt bunny garland that they have right now at Dollar Tree and created some Easter DIYs for my home this year. And I try to change it up so that each DIY has a different color scheme so that you can each get ideas because I know when it comes to decorating our home, we all have different color tones that we like. So hopefully you like the variety that I'm sharing with you guys in today's video. So this is what the felt bunny garland packet looks like and it comes with pom poms and in each bag you get eight of these felt bunnies and it also comes with the ribbon so that you can actually use as a garland and you can use it just as is. I think this would be really cute to decorate your home as is but I know that you can make so many DIYs with this and so I want you guys to get in the comments and share with me all the ideas that you guys have because I know there's so many things that you can do with this. But the first thing I'm gonna share with you guys is how I made pillows out of this. So. What I'm using is this super soft microfiber cloth that you can get in the auto section at Dollar Tree. And I love it because it's white and it's so fluffy. It feels like those fluffy expensive pillows that you buy anywhere else. Um, it's the same type of material. So I have made um, pillows with this, um, this white towel on my channel before. And so I'm gonna show you guys again how I do it. So the first pillow that I'm gonna make is the biggest one out of the three, one, the three that I'm gonna show with you guys in this video today. And it's gonna be a long one because I want it to fit like four bunnies on it. And I'm going more of the pastel colors for Easter. That's my color tone. Um, so I wanted to use the four pastel colors of the eight pack, which is that light blue, light pink, that purple and the yellow. But again, you could always switch it up how you guys want it and I will share with you guys how I did another one for my mom who likes the hot pink and the greens. So I'm just laying it out how I want it before I cut the, you know, the material because I don't want to cut it too short or anything. So I always lay out my design first to see what I need to, you know, how big I need the pillow to be. And I've made square pillows before with this as well, but like I said, I'm gonna make a rectangular one to make it more of a long version because I wanna fit four of these bunnies. So I'm just taking the ruler and seeing how, you know, how tall I need it to be, where it looks nice um, with the bunnies. And then I'm gonna kinda like fold it over and then start cutting it. Now when you see me cutting, I am not doing this perfectly. I just eyeball it guys. And I know some of you guys who are, um, who make pillows, who sew and stuff like that. You guys are probably gonna look at me and like, oh my God, you have messed that up. But I just kind of eyeball it and it's always worked for me, but you do what you want for you if you wanna mark it perfectly. Um, and then I just take these um, fabric scissors, which I do recommend using fabric scissors whenever you cut any fabric, because if not, it will just like, if you use regular scissors, it's, it will not cut that sharp edge that you want. And I guess that's why it works for me that I don't really have to measure too, um, you know, too precise because with these sharp scissors, they cut um, very well for me. So they just work for me. And then after I cut that piece off, then I will take the second towel and lay it over that, um, lay the piece over that and kind of eyeball it again and then cut the two pieces um, to the shape that I need. Now, once you cut your two pieces, you wanna put the two outside pieces together before you glue it down or sew it. In this case, it's the soft part of the towel. So on, um, on one side of the towel, you have that soft fluffy side and on the other side, it's like a smooth side. You want the fluffy side on the outside of the pillow. So you wanna put the two fluffy sides together before you start sewing, or in my case, gluing the pieces together. So if you are a returning subscriber on my channel, you guys know that I make everything with my hot glue gun. Like I love my hot glue gun. If I can glue it, I will make it. And that is the same when it comes to pillows. I have made all my decorative pillows with hot glue because I feel like it's not something you have to lay on and it doesn't have to be comfortable. It's just for decoration. So I feel like I don't really have to learn how to sew to make decorative pillows. I could just glue the pieces together. And as long as I could glue something with a glue gun, I'm gonna do it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna glue all the edges um, with the hot glue gun, but I'm gonna leave a little hole, um, a little opening to you know flip the, the fabric inside out and then stuff it. Now, 
Now to close the opening for the pillow, it's kind of like a little bit tricky, but it can be done. What you need to do is you need to take the two pieces and kind of fold them down and then glue them together and then use clips to kind of hold the glue in place while it dries. So normally I use clothespins for this and I've used it all the time to make my other pillows and that works great. Um, but I wanted to try something different this time. I actually wanted to use the little plant clips that I bought that I shared with you guys in my last Dollar Tree haul. I wanted to see how those worked because they come in a bunch of different little sizes and I thought that would be perfect for the pillow and they work just as good too. So whenever you're making pillows, if you have clothespins at the house or if you have these, um, they both will work fine. So you just have to, you know, fold the, the little pieces down, glue them together with the hot glue gun and then clip well, you have to glue and clip as you go to hold it in place while the glue's dry so it doesn't try to separate because of, you know, kind of like the weight of like the, the stuffing will make it try to separate on its own. So the clips are there to hold it while the glue dries. On the felt bunnies there's two holes where you can like loop the ribbon to make it you know the garland so you can leave that as is if that doesn't bother you but I actually wanted it not to be seen so I decided to take the ribbon that came with the pack for the garland and to just use it as to make a bow so all of my bunnies will have bows but like I said you can leave this as is but I decided to just take that ribbon and create bows for my bunnies. Then I attached all my bunnies onto my pillows with, you guessed it, hot glue. And this is how the first pillow turned out and I loved it because it's such a huge pillow for only $2.50 to make this pillow guys. I just love it. For the next pillow, I'm gonna go with a different type of color scheme. I'm gonna go with the leftover bunnies that I have. I have the hot pink one and the lime green one and I actually took another hot pink one from the second pack. So my mom loves these color tones so I'm making this pillow for her and I'm making her another, I'm making another rectangular pillow just like the first one only this one's going to be smaller and for this one you only need one towel so you're going to take one of the towels and fold it in half and that gives you your rectangular shape of your pillow so you can make either or depending on what parts of the house you're decorating in you can make a big one like the first one or you can make a smaller rectangle one like this one so it all depends on how many bunnies you want to put on there if you want to put four bunnies on there you're going to need two of the towels and if you're gonna put three or one or two you just need you know one of the towels so this is how I'm gonna make this one and it's gonna be just the way I made the other one only I'll just be using one towel instead and this is how this one turned out it came out so cute as well and you can say basically that this cost like a less than a dollar fifty to make this one because you only needed one of the towels for it and then I decided I wanted to make another small pillow, but this time I wanted to make it a square and then add this little pretty teal blue that um, comes in the pack as well. And you do it just like the last one, only you just cut it in the shape of a square instead of leaving it in the shape of the rectangle as the previous one. For the next DIY, I knew I wanted to take one of these bunnies, especially that light teal blue one and frame them. So I took this eight by 10 stretch canvas and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it apart and just keep the wood part of this stretch canvas to use as a frame for the bunny.
Now this piece of wood, because it's unfinished, it takes stain very well, so you could stain this if you wanted to, but I'm gonna take some white matte paint and kinda do like a dry brushing effect, like I've done in my other DIYs. I like using this paintbrush because it gives that good, um, it just, with the bristles that it has, it does a great dry brushing effect where it doesn't add too much paint to whatever you're DIYing. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted that natural wood underneath, but I kind of wanted a little bit of white showing to kind of age it and give it that white wash kind of look. So that's what I'm doing with my frame. But like I said, this, this wood, since it's unfinished, it takes stain very well, or you can even dilute paint. You don't even have to buy stain. You can dilute some brown paint, some red paint, and put it on this wood and it looks like stain. I've done that in a bunch of my DIYs before too. Um, if you guys have been following my channel, I don't buy stain. I just take like the brown or the grays or the red, whatever I'm using, dilute it in some water and paint it onto the wood and it looks like, you know, wood stain. So that's another thing that you can do if you wanna save money or if you just don't wanna buy any stain. Um, but I'm just gonna do this whitewash dry brushing effect for my frame. And this is how it looks once I was done dry brushing it to how I wanted it to be. And then I just took some white cardstock paper and I'm gonna glue it to the back to be the backing of this frame. Um, I wouldn't suggest using regular paper because it won't be that sturdy and I felt like cardstock was a little bit more sturdier than paper and I do suggest that. So get some cardstock, some white cardstock to do this DIY. And then I'm just taking my hot glue gun. You guys know I love my hot glue gun. I told you if I can glue with a hot glue gun, I'll make it. And I'm just taking my hot glue gun and just putting hot glue on the back of the frame. And then I'm just gonna glue the white cardstock to the back of it. Then I'm gonna take that second light teal blue bunny because I remember I told you I bought two packs of these and I'm gonna place it in the middle of this frame and just glue it down to the white paper again with my hot glue gun. And this is how this DIY turned out and it's a great decor piece to put on the wall. And I wanted to create a huge wall piece for my house um, to go with the other four pastel colored ones that I have in the other pack. So what I'm gonna do is, or what I did was, I bought those paint mixing sticks at Home Depot that you can get three in a pack for 98 cents. And I'm gonna make a huge kind of like a platform or crate looking backing um, for the bunnies. I don't know I, I don't know if it's called a crate front or if it's called a platform. I don't know what they call it, but it's basically um, I'm gonna take the sticks and line them um, line them kind of looking like the front of a crate and that's gonna be like the backing. So it's gonna be kind of like a farmhouse kind of decor piece. So like I said, you only need two packs for this because you're gonna use five of the sticks to be the the lining where the the bunnies will sit at and as you can see i am lining them up to see how many i need for the size of the bunny because i wanted the bunny to fit in the middle of it so as you can see there are um you need five of them to make the length of it and then you're going to take the sixth one and you're going to cut it down to the shape that you know to the length that you need and you're going to use that for the backing now to glue this stuff together, I'm gonna use this fix all adhesive glue that I get at Dollar Tree. I told you guys all the time in my Dollar Tree DIYs, this glue looks, I mean looks, works just as great as E6000 and I love using it for all my projects. And whenever I use it guys, I cannot take nothing apart. That thing glues things together um, and it does not move. But I use the hot glue as well because of the fast drying time. Now this little ruler that I'm using is one that you can get at Dollar Tree in the auto section and it just keeps everything straight. And with these painter sticks, like you can see, they have a little handle to them, which doesn't bother me. I kind of like the pattern of it and I did, I alternated it with each one. Um, but if you don't like that look, then you can cut it off. But again, you won't be able to fit the four bunnies on it. But um, I just, it didn't, it didn't bother me for, to have that little handle. But if it does bother you, then um, if you cut it down, you will only be able to probably to fit three bunnies. So I'm just lining them up and making sure that they're as straight as possible before I glue anything down. And then I'm gonna do the same whitewash kind of painting effect that I did with the last um, DIY on this DIY as well before I add the bunnies to it.
then I use my hot glue gun again just to glue down the bunnies onto the little crate or I don't know what this thing is called let me know down below I've seen this in the store guys where I've seen this type of um, backing that you can buy and make like different DIYs and sometimes I see it in Hobby Lobby they'll have a decor piece like this so what is this called is this a crate or is this um, a crate front or is it called a platform um, I don't know what this is called I know there's a name for it but I just can't think of it so if you know the name for what this thing is this kind of pattern this little thing that I made in the back um, let me know in the comments down below And this is how this DIY turned out, you guys. I really like this one. It is such a big like decor piece for my home. I love the way it turned out. It has that farmhouse feel, but has the pastel of Easter colors, and I can't wait to decorate my home with this piece. So the last three felt bunnies that I had left, I don't, that color scheme I wasn't decorating with. You know, the hot pink and the green wasn't my color tones. I like the pastel colors and that light teal blue. So I decided to paint them black and make something out of them with them being black and kind of going with like more modern feel. Now guys, I am gonna tell you guys that this took me forever to paint this thing black. I started off with craft paint and it wasn't sinking in. I was still seeing the pink and the green. Then I spray painted it and I was still seeing the pink in the green but then after the spray paint I let it sink in for a day went back in with craft paint and then it kind of got better but you can still kind of see the green and the pink if you look up close so this thing is really hard to paint uh, another color I just wanted to give you guys that heads up if you ever try to do it it will take a lot of paint but I wanted to go with a more modern fierce a mod a modern feel so I painted it black and I decided to glue them together to kind of make a hanging sign that I had seen in Hobby Lobby or I think it was in Hobby Lobby or home somewhere for about $25 and it had just three of these bunnies um, put together just like this and hanging like a hanging sign for $25 and I just took the leftover ones I had painted them black and put them together and there you go I made the exact same sign so that is it for today's video, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope I gave you guys some inspiration to create some beautiful home decor pieces of your own for your home this Easter season. I wanted to give you guys different, DIY, you know, different ideas for DIYs and different color tones and how some colors go together, um, so that I'm not just doing what I'm into. You guys can see a different, um, you know, different types of color schemes and different type of ideas on how to make things with the things at Dollar Tree. Stay tuned. I have some more DIYs coming for you guys. The next two videos are going to be DIYs for Easter. I want to knock those out and give them to you guys because I also want to share with you guys how I'm decorating my home for Easter. So stay tuned for those two more DIY videos and also a home tour of how I'm decorating my home for Easter. And then I'll get back to doing the meal planning and all the other ideas. But right now it's all about DIYs and decorating. So stay tuned for those and definitely keep tagging me on Instagram. Instagram with the DIYs that you guys are doing because I love sharing them on my Instagram and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Hey guys, don't forget to click on the picture in the middle of the screen so you can subscribe to my channel and get notifications on all the new videos that I put out and check out these other two videos that I have posted on my channel on either side of my picture. Have a great day.